My introduction to robotics was completely accidental. My knowledge before that was limited to Transformers, the movie. <laughs> anyway, the only reason I took any interest was because five years ago, my mom dragged me to her friend's newly opened robotics workshop and I was obligated to try it out. So they gave us a few Lego pieces and I experimented with them. And before I knew it, I was inducted into this newly formed team for the Indian Robot Olympiad. And I remember thinking, really, I signed up for a robotics workshop? I don't need to build robots, I need a new phone. Anyway, that year, somehow, our team, consisting of three 12-year-olds, two from other schools, reached the World Robot Olympiad. And we had no idea what a huge deal this was. So I remember thinking, is it necessary? Do I need to go? If nothing, it would be a good vacation in Korea. But I'm glad to say that, that one accidental trip to Korea has allowed me to progress and win the Technical Excellence Award for my robot at a world stage last year. Going to the World Robot Olympiad is an amazing experience. There are so many project ideas to learn from and the skill of the robots presented is just amazing to watch. There are people from almost 70 countries coming together. So you can imagine what a huge deal this was for us winning that award. And today, I want to explain to you a robot that I'm really proud of personally and one that I learned a lot from. In 2012, the theme for the World Robot Olympiad was robots improving lives. So immediately you think, a surgical robot or a factory robot. But I mean, those ideas have been thought in and out by experts and amateurs and basically everybody. They weren't as intriguing to us. So we looked at what it really means to improve lives. What are three things you can't live without? Food, sleep, and fun. And I'm not just saying that because I'm 16. It's psychologically proven that you need some sort of recreation for mental stability. What we also realized was there aren't enough recreational options for people with disabilities, specifically the visually impaired. Just to give you some context, the current technology that allows a visually impaired person to play basketball is just a simple set of bells placed inside the ball to help detect its location. But that doesn't allow them to fully enjoy the game or even compete to the, person, compete to the level of a person with vision simply because it's so much harder to play games and other sports depending on only your other senses. But just think about it, what game can I or anyone here play against a visually impaired person without having any unfair advantage? So we thought of air hockey. Now you're thinking, air hockey with all these movements, how is it applicable to the visually impaired? I'm sure you all know this game and so you also know that it depends on vision because the puck moves pretty fast, you need quick reflexes, and the and the objective of the game being scoring the most points, you need to know where the goal is. But we were convinced that if we could somehow convert the visual feedback that the eye gives us, locating the puck, finding its speed, locating the opponent's goal, if we could somehow convert all this visual feedback into a tactile setting, then we could make air hockey a possibility for people who couldn't see. So now let me explain to you how the actual robot works and some of the logic that went behind it. This is what our game board looked like. The first thing we did was divide the game into three identifiable systems. The first was responsible for the movement of the puck. How did it do that? Well, each player was given a panel on their left hand side and they were required to place their uh, left hand in this confined rectangle and underneath was an axle which is just a thin movable rod. So this rectangle was a miniature representation of the board and the axle was a miniature representation of the puck. So as the puck would move across the board, the axle would move across the rectangle imitating that exact same movement of the puck. So when the visually impaired person put their left hand on this confined rectangle, they would feel the axle moving underneath and so they could decide when they want to hit the puck and how. Now in this animation that I'm about to show you, I need you to concentrate on the puck but also on the axle. 
and you'll see that they move exactly in sync. Now I have a small uh, video also which shows what's happening underneath the puck tracker. So it's in slow motion first. So as the puck moves towards me, the axle imitates that movement. And this is what it looked like in real time. The second system was responsible for the location of the opponent's striker. Why is this important? Because as I said before, scoring the most points is the objective. And knowing where the opponent's striker is uh, helps you to aim better. So say the opponent's striker was in the left-hand side. You'd want to aim at an angle to the right so you have a better chance of scoring. Now, what we did was we gave the player a glove and they were required to wear that glove on their left hand as well. And this glove had six vibrating motors sewed onto it, two rows of three, exactly like that. And each motor represented a relative rectangle on the opponent's half of the board. So say the opponent's striker was in the left-hand corner, the left-hand motor would vibrate. But say it was on the bottom right, the bottom right motor would vibrate. So again, in the animation that I'm about to show you, concentrate on how each motor vibrates, which is represented by a blue lighting up rectangle, in accordance to where the opponent's striker moves. So just follow both of them. And this was the position of the six motors. So now, I'm a, so this was the essence of our robot. Put it together in your head. On the player would hold their striker in their right hand, and on their left hand would uh, be a panel. And underneath this panel, an axle would move, relaying the movement of the puck. And on top, a motor would vibrate, showing them where the opponent's striker was. So now I have a video that will explain, that will demo to you what the robot looked like in action to help give you a better idea. So these are some of the people we tested it on. And uh, we blindfolded them for the purpose of the simulation. And as you can see, they were pretty good at passing the puck around. They didn't cheat, I promise you. And they scored some goals. And they really enjoyed the experience. But to test our robot's true capabilities, we look, we actually visited the Happy Home School for the Blind. So we set up our whole robot there for the children, and it was really satisfying to see how excited they were. I think the novelty of the concept really got to them because they were fascinated by the moving axle or the vibrating motors. And in the end, I think it's safe to say that our idea was a success because A, they were able to play the game, and B, they really liked the idea. It was most exciting to see our project materializing in front of us. But looking at them, we realized that some of the children couldn't play if only one um, child was available, this being a two-player game. And that's where we got the idea for the robotic arm. So we created an arm that would play single-handedly against the visually impaired person. So it has a hinge joint in the center attached to its own striker. And looking at how, looking at the movement of the puck, it decides whether to play defense or offense. And then when the puck comes in range, it swings to the correct position and then pushes out. So after six long months of overcoming limitations, figuring out better construction strategies, and a lot of pizza, our robot was complete. But this project got me thinking, where is this all going? The possibilities are endless. 20 years ago, robots couldn't even perform simple motor movements. And then came communication and mobility and so much more. This all points towards one ultimate goal. Robots becoming human-like or humanoid, evolving into the creator. A perfect robot needs to be as functional as you or me. And so in our development, we are constantly finding solutions to transferring our everyday functionalities into a robot. Put simply, to understand robotics, we need to understand us. Today, it's robots improving lives. 
Tomorrow, it'll be robots working with humans to make unparalleled inventions. The age of Robo Sapiens is here. The robot revolution has begun, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you.